Insects make for a really good drawing exercise because they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and are super versatile visually, which means they can be utilized in so many different ways. More than that, because they have so many different color sequences, it's such a great way to explore various color mediums and see how you can strategically integrate color into your own insect drawing. And in today's video, we will be looking at a very cute, a very unique creature, and that is the ladybug. With that being said, hey guys, my name is Matt. Welcome to another video by Art artincontext.org where we explore various art related topics and in today's video we will be learning how to draw a ladybug with some colored pencils. So with that being said let's get into it. Now we're going to start by sketching the ladybug shape. So we want to start by using our HP pencils to draw a dome shape. We we'll want to draw the shape in the middle of the page uh, which will represent the larger part of the ladybug's body. Since we are drawing the ladybug from a side view just because this is a little bit more interesting and gives the ladybug a more nuanced perspective in terms of its positioning in our drawing. We want to imagine if we are seeing this dome shape from a side view as well. So from here we want to then draw an opening on one side of the dome shape. We will be drawing the ladybug from the side view which means this opening should have a slight distortion as if it is seen from the side. So that is something you do want to think about in terms of the little opening that kind of um, positions the head or where the head will connect to that dome shape and naturally this will distort some of the features as some will sit in the foreground and some will sit in the background. We will then proceed to draw another little dome pebble shape by the opening of that first larger dome shape. The second shape should should be significantly smaller and should fit into the opening that we draw on the first dome shape. Imagine it as a second dome shape that could slide into the larger one. Then continuing with this particular process we will then draw a third shape which will be smaller and connected to the second shape we drew previously. We want to imagine it as a set of pebbles that kind of go from large to small and being placed together it should seem as if they look like Russian nesting dolls that are capable of being placed in one another. Now we're going to move on to to actually sketching the ladybug's features. So we should be left with a generic ladybug structure that consists of three shapes placed next to one another. Again, the ladybug shape consists of these three basic shapes. All three are dome shapes and fit together like three little pebbles. However, the smaller shape where the ladybug's face will be is more of a spearheaded shape with a flat top. So since we are drawing the ladybug from a side angle, we want to place only a single eye on the smaller shape. From here, we can begin to draw the the first leg since we are only seeing the ladybug from a side view so this means we'll only have to draw one side of the legs uh, the front legs sprout from the front area of the elytra or the largest dome shape which is kind of the largest structure of the ladybug we want the leg to be divided into two sections as well emphasizing that skeletal quality of the bug or more specifically that exoskeletal quality which does have segments and joints within its uh, structure so we want to make sure that we are using our erases as well during the sketching phase this way we can tweak and edit as we go um, throughout this early sketching phase with our pencils you are more than welcome to use any visual reference to assist you in your drawing process again make sure the leg sprouts away from the body though giving the bug a more realistic quality in its structure um, having some sort of visual reference to assist you is going to be helpful but the ladybug is quite a simple structure to draw um, but as we continue with the face of the ladybug drawing remember that we are drawing the in insects from a side view angle. It's important to remember this. This means that one side is going to be much more visible than that of the other side naturally because one side of the features is sitting in the foreground and then the other side of the features um, are sitting in the background. Uh, so this means that one side is predominantly visible whilst the other side is only slightly visible. Consider this as you draw the eyes perhaps allowing for a small bit of the other eye to be present. Another thing to note about the ladybug eyes is that they do bulge so we will see a subtle uh, visibility on the eye that is on the less visible side of our ladybug. Now we can also add in the pronotum shapes within the ladybug drawing which are the two rectangular shapes that fall along the sides of the middle shape. Again consider that the bug is seen from a side angle this means that only one of the shapes on the pronotum will be completely visible. Now another good reason to kind of look at a reference image of a ladybug is to get a better understanding of the terminology and the various anatomical structures and how they are placed together. So as we continue with this process we know what we are talking about and 
also how these various features work um, collectively within a single ladybug structure. Now, since we will be predominantly coloring the face and pronotum area of the ladybug in black, we can use our HB pencils to add shading within this area of the bug. Remember, the ladybug has these shapes on the face and in the pronotum area that will remain white. So we just want to strategically color or shade around them. We will be using colored pencils as well to color in our ladybug drawing, which means we want to make sure we draw in the shapes um, on the wings of the elytra. Remember, we are only seeing the ladybug from an angle. This means that we will only see the features on one side of the ladybug. So as you draw in the spots that will be black, remember not to add too many as this is also an unrealistic quality in terms of how it actually looks on an actual ladybug in real life. Now we're going to move on to adding color to our ladybug drawing. Using our red pencil or a red pencil, we will proceed to add color to the ladybug drawing. So with the ladybug aesthetic, there are many ways to kind of uh, depict it through the use of color. Um, however, we want to use our coloring pencils to create a variety of different tonal values within our ladybug drawing. And this is just going to give it a more realistic quality. So we can start to add in some red coloring lightly though, within the ladybug's elytra or wings area. Now we want to be a bit tactical and strategic with how we add our colors so the intention will be to depict some shine or highlights within the ladybug which means we want to be really considerate of the various tonal values within this red coloration we do this by coloring red in sections or strips along the ladybug rather than coloring the entire uh, or whole structure of the ladybug at once um, and this is where we will want to start using our orange pencils and yellow pencils as a way to define a gradient within the ladybugs elytra so we're trying to develop this quality of a highlight uh, that's lightening that red coloration on the glassy surface area of the elytra by doing this we will suggest that light is interacting with that smooth surface of the ladybug structure um, so we can use our orange pencils and maybe yellow pencils to start blending into the red strokes within the ladybugs elytra feature now remember you want to color around the spots that you drew on the elytra which obviously will become black eventually. You can also draw in shapes within the wings uh, which you may leave out white to suggest a more stark shine or really vivid shine or highlight on the ladybug's wing or elytra. So this is a good way to kind of just indicate areas that you'd like to be um, very contrasted in terms of those uh, light highlights. Uh, we want to use our red pencil and orange pencil to also suggest a gradient within the ladybug structure. However, we want to make sure that the red is the main or most predominantly seen coloration so making the ladybug vivid in this way we do want to consider how those um, gradients from orange to red uh, are predominantly red so allow yourself to play around with how you add in these colors and just think about also the curved nature of the elytra structure <laughs> And another good way to think about how to add highlights is to think about a light source being predominantly present on one side. And this is a great way to kind of indicate the direction uh, from which the light source is coming, which inevitably will interact with a singular side uh, of the ladybug structure. And ultimately, that is where the highlights will be most present. So you can play around with this. Now, as we proceed, a good tip to remember as well is that you can have sharp lines of color, as this is also representative of a smooth surface surface which is the case for the ladybug structure. Remember that as you add color to the ladybug you want to work around the spots uh, so that's a very important aspect of this coloring process uh, but you then can at this point start to color in those spots black and ultimately thinking through how they work um, collectively with that red coloration. So we can also start to work with our ballpoint pens to add in some black features within the ladybug emphasizing the contrast between the color and the shiny black areas. Using ballpoint pens is a really good medium to utilize and work in tandem with colored pencils and graphite pencils because it works quite similar in the sense that you are very conscious of the pressure you apply and the ink comes out quite sparingly which gives us a lot of agency over our mark making process. So we do want to use our ballpoint pens to add in the black features within the ladybug emphasizing the contrast between the color and the shiny black areas. Remember we want to slightly go over our colors uh, more and more in terms of building up those tonal values with our color uh, and this will 
emphasize that red uh, predominantly within the um, elytra structure or feature of our ladybug as the most dominant color. We also want to slightly darken the red a little more by adding layers over it with our colored pencil. So when you think about coloring anything, especially when it's an organic structure like an insect, you always want to think about building up your tonal values uh, from lighter layers to darker layers. And this way you can also have more control over your coloring process because then you can stop without having colored too dark by accident. So think about building up your layers from light to dark as you as you build up your color variations within your ladybug drawing. We want to make sure that we are also using our orange pencils to develop that gradient within the ladybug um, from the red areas to the moments of shine or highlights. So the orange color or the orange pencil can be used strategically to kind of um, define that middle area in the gradient that shifts from a vivid red and ultimately to these very light highlights on the surface area of that ladybug structure. Again, the surface of the ladybug's wings is quite smooth, like a metallic surface. So this means we can play around with adding in uh, areas of highlights to suggest a shine or a reflection off the surface of that elytra structure or the wings. So play around with adding highlights to your ladybug drawing uh, to capture this effect and ultimately just take your time slowly working on these gradients as you proceed to color in your ladybug. Now as we continue and we keep working in the black spots with our ballpoint pens, we do want to be cautious with our ballpoint pen. Uh, so we do want to proceed with the shading process very cautiously. So just apply the same process of shading um, with your ballpoint pen uh, as you would with a pencil in the sense that you just want to be cautious of the pressure that you apply to your pen. Taking your time using a ballpoint pen to shade in certain areas and add in some details is really ideal as it is easy to make mistakes using a ballpoint pen. Uh, we also still want to slowly add layers into our red areas, continuously going back and forth between ballpoint pen shading process as well as the coloring process with our red pencils. Um, so kind of building up those layers of red uh, in the various areas areas that are necessary in our ladybug drawing until we are left with a deep red quality within our ladybug drawing. Now we're going to move on to shading in the ladybug face with our ballpoint pen. Um, we want to now move on to that area and focus on that area emphasizing the dark areas of the ladybug insect. So this includes the pronotum and the face area of the ladybug. Uh, with your ballpoint pen you can proceed to shade in the pronotum area making sure we shade around the rectangular shape. Again the exoskeleton quality of the ladybug means that its shell is hard and smooth which is the same of the pronotum and the face area which is capable of reflecting light off of its surface so we do want to bear that in mind this means that we want to create highlights within these areas as well so take your time creating a gradient from dark to light with your ballpoint pen and in these smaller areas you really want to take your time really focusing on building up those gradients with your ballpoint pen uh, applying a lot of pressure for darker areas and then softening that pressure on your hand for lighter areas. Um, the more gradients you create within these surface areas, the more realistic it's going to be in terms of suggesting that hard, smooth um, textural quality in the elytra, as well as in the pronotum and the exoskeleton quality within the face. Uh, from there, we can kind of continue with shading in the ladybug legs with our pen as well. So we will proceed to do the same with the legs of the ladybug where we use our ballpoint pens to shade in the legs. However, again, we can leave little sections of white or negative space in the legs to suggest a hard exoskeleton quality that is reflecting light off of its surface. And by doing this, we will have a more realistic ladybug drawing in the end. The hind legs will be seen as curling into the elytra or underneath the wings. So this means that they will kind of poke out of the elytra structure slightly as they bend inward. Again, for both legs, they are divided into two sections, kind of defining that joints in the the leg structure. Um, however, the shading process is still the same where the legs are predominantly black with little light areas of white. And then lastly, we can proceed to adding in these little details. So we can return to the face of the ladybug where we can start to add in the antenna. Uh, we can add these features with our ballpoint pens as they are quite simple structures to draw and often are just black. However, still take your time and be cautious as you add them to the face. We don't want to ruin our drawing in these later stages. We can also add in little shadows underneath our ladybug just to further 
contextualize the three-dimensional quality of a ladybug drawing and it also kind of gives us this idea of being present within a space and not just floating in a void uh, so we can use both pencil and pen for this uh, but remember to keep it relatively light shadows aren't necessarily so stark or dark um, it all depends on how harsh the lighting is but do try to keep it fairly light um, and this is just a good way to again further emphasize that three-dimensional quality within your ladybug drawing you can go through your drawing one last time if you'd like to uh, but otherwise guys that is it a few basic steps to drawing a realistic ladybug some key things to take away always start by forming the structure in its most essential and fundamental shapes in this case we kind of establish those three dome shapes those pebble shapes we then refine the structure by adding details working on the face the pronotum the elytra structure uh, a good suggestion is also to always look at some reference images uh, preferably a diagrammatical reference images that kind of give you some sort of indication of the various features and their terminology and then ultimately it's a matter of building up these various shading marks um, and applying that process of building up those tonal values with your colored pencil and maybe a darker medium like pen as well um, but otherwise the most important thing is to always just take your time if you feel tired take a break and then come back to your drawing process feeling a little more refreshed and ultimately giving you the opportunity to really focus on your drawing process without making any unnecessary mistakes but otherwise guys thanks again if you like the video please let us know in the comment section below if you are interested in similar or related topics um, where maybe we draw more insects and look at various animals and creatures uh, we really love to make those videos so if you are interested please let us know um, if you did like the video please drop a like please subscribe this helps us to grow the channel which ultimately enables us to make more art related content for you guys but otherwise that is it from me today thanks again for tuning in until next time cheers guys